So first things first, like I always like to do is highlight the build number for this release. It is 22D5040D. And as you would expect, there are definitely bug fixes and security fixes related to this release. Obviously, Apple's not going to dis disclose those until they actually publish iOS 18.3. But the point is, even if there aren't a ton of new features, everyone's going to want to upgrade for the security fixes alone. Now, in the previous beta, the camera control settings icon within accessibility was updated with dark mode support. So now we have dark mode capability there. Not really a huge deal, but nice to have that. Now, one of the biggest features so far in 18.3 is the ability to repeat calculations within the calculator app, which was taken away with iOS 18's release. And a lot of people complain about that. So it used to be able to just tap equals and it would continue that calculation. But since iOS 18's release, you can no longer do that. Of course, the calculator app did have massive improvement overall, but this is one feature that st stood out to people that was sort of annoying. So here's how it is on 18.3. So I'm gonna perform this calculation nine to five minus 25. I can keep tapping equals now, and it will keep performing that calculation all the way. I mean, I could go all the way down to zero if I want to. And then of course you can go in and edit calculations. So if I wanna do that, I can do so, and then continue to repeat that calculation with the equal sign. So that's a nice improvement for 18.3 for sure. Now, if you live in Brazil, you'd be happy to know that sleep apnea notifications are now enabled in iOS 18.3. So that's a nice new update. And 9 to 5 Mac found new intelligence sounds in the screen reader framework. So that could hint to some integration with Apple intelligence with this handy accessibility feature. We also found that some Tamale widget references were removed in 18.3, which were previously there. Well, what is Tamale, you may be asking? Well, it's actually a code name for a widget that allows you to access this right here, which is, of course, visual intelligence. Now, the only way to access visual intelligence so far is via an iPhone 16 era device and using the camera control button on the side of the phone, like I just did there. And this allows you to perform a reverse Google search uh, for images and also ask ChatGPT about various images or various things within that scene. Now, this has all proved to be somewhat controversial. Shocker, right? Because Apple is basically saying that in order to use visual intelligence, you have to have a camera control button. But we know that's not really necessary. For instance, here within the camera app, you can simply ask ChatGPT, what am I looking at here? And it will actually do basically the same thing. Granted, it's a little bit more involved as far as having to tap send to send the screenshot, et cetera. So it's not as seamless, but there really is no reason why Apple is limiting the visual intelligence feature to camera control enabled devices. And that's what Tamale was doing. It was a widget that allowed you to access visual intelligence from anywhere. So right here on your home screen, for instance, but that's been removed. At least that reference has been removed in 18.3 beta two. So again, it appears the whole point of this was to allow you to be able to access visual intelligence without needing this button right here, which you do need to access visual intelligence as of now. And of course that button only lives on iPhone 16 era devices. That includes the iPhone 16, 16 plus 16 pro and 16 pro max. So I'm curious, what, what do you guys think about the idea of having a widget that allows you to do this? Or would you prefer just to have a simple control center or shortcut option for that that you can assign anywhere. Let me know down below. Multiple references to a new CarPlay hybrid instrument was added to Maps. And this likely has to do with the upcoming next generation CarPlay, which was supposed to be available on at least one car by the end of 2024. Of course, that never happened. So the question is, will the next generation CarPlay ever see the light of day? Is it still in the works? So those previous references and new references to AC controls make us wonder, maybe CarPlay 2 just wasn't ready yet, and that's the reason for the delay. Now, I don't know if you've ever encountered this, the little tiny Apple logo slash progress bar when updating an iPhone 16 Pro Max, but Apple has now fixed that issue in 18.3 as well. And there's a new ISP Xclave Kit Services framework in 18.3. Now, this is not to be confused with the secure enclave that we're talking about the secure exclave and what that does is it secures the privacy indicator so these are no longer rendered by software these are now rendered by hardware so anytime you have that privacy indicator for the camera or the microphone that is done 
via the secure exclave. And like the enclave, this is a secure area separate from the rest of the system. The reason why this is important is because that can't be compromised via software to make it seem like your camera was not on when it actually was. Because that's now secured in the exclave, there's no way that software can compromise that. So the same thing happens when with the camera, you get the little green indicator and with the microphone, you get the orange indicator. Now, all this is not new. This actually began with the M4 iPad Pro and it came to the iPhone 16 era devices as well. But what is new in 18.3 is that this new framework indicates that Apple is moving or are considering moving stuff related to the ISP or the image signal processor to the secure exclave. And of course we know the image signal processor is where all the cameras on the iPhone send their bits to be processed. Now Apple's platform security document, which was just updated last month, still makes no mention of the secure exclave, even though that's been in an Apple product for quite some time now. Uh, but hopefully that will be updated in the near future with details on the secure exclave. And finally, hints of a new events app makes a reappearance in 18.3. Now, this differs from the calendar app where you can go in and of course create events and things like that, uh, invite people. This appears to integrate with iCloud and is more leaning towards invitations. Think if you ever use the app Partyful to create these really nice looking invitations to multiple people, maybe for things like a wedding or anything else, then you get an idea of what we're talking about here. So it's different from adding invites to a calendar invite. Uh, this is actually a way to create really nice, fancy little, little invitations with things like confetti and all that digital confetti. And that is something we will probably see in an upcoming iOS release. So ladies and gents, that's been a look at iOS 18.3 developer beta two. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. We'll be back with another episode of iOS Decoded when the next beta release drops. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.